It is Friday, May 29th, and boy, do we have a treat for you. Lauren Shahadi, Mark DeRosa, and are you kidding me? The Real One Five. Good morning, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing good. How are y'all doing? We're good. About four years ago, Dero, you remember this. You had an idea to have breakfast with the Millars every single Friday, and here we are four years later, but it's working. He, he bailed on that about two weeks in. He gave <laughs> us two weeks, bailed on that. Robert Flores is out. What is he doing? Some digital graduation. Alone. Complete scam. <laughs> he, he's now going to get Wally Pitt by my boy Malar. I've been waiting for this. Who's playing <laughs> hurt, by the way? Kevin, how are you feeling? Tell us about your surgery. I'm feeling good. What happened was for about three years, I've had this little limp, and it's brutal, and I didn't know. But I'm going to tell you the truth. You know what it is? Besides the plantar fasciitis, you know, you, they go in, they cut this little fa fascia, they call it, and they just snip it, no big deal. But it's the Kirk Schilling 2004 bloody sock tendon over the ankle shaved bone. Yes, that's what I had to do on the left foot. So now I kind of, all the years I've made fun of Kirk, saying it was ketchup and the whole situation. Yeah, it was really painful. So Kirk Schilling, I apologize for all that, all those uh, jokes I've made of you. But I, I basically had the Schilling surgery on that tendon and so hopefully in a couple weeks i'll be back and mark the can take all my money on the golf course next time <laughs> oh, was, hopefully so. i'm sure he's looking forward to it i i was gonna say kevin because i know in austin golf courses are open right now well, for you to go under the knife i mean what was there is there a squall coming through austin that we're not aware of yet do you have a hours. tip on uh weather coming Hey, honest to God, Dero, I looked at the weather. It was supposed to rain all week this week. So we planned this last Tuesday, you know, the Tuesday, three days ago. And it's like the storm came in at midnight. It lasted for about seven hours. Blue skies the entire, the entire two weeks down the road. And now I got all the boys, Buck, Colts, Slack, Arietta. All the boys are golfing and gambling. They come by for about one minute. Hey, shot 79 today, won 150 bucks. And I've got my foot propped up eating cream of wheat and coffee black. Get out of here. Well, we hope for a speedy recovery for you and Mama Gina taking wonderful care of you. While you're on the couch this weekend, Kev, uh, flip on MLB Network, 64 hours of Derek Jeter's greatest highlights. This is the 25th anniversary of his debut. And Dero, you always tell me you were on second base laughing with him. What's your greatest memory of playing with him? Oh, you, you know what, Lauren, just getting a chance in 2009, I played on Team USA in the WBC and just getting a chance to literally, we stretched next to each other for about six weeks and to break bread, hit batting practice with them. But I tell a funny story because Millar is on. The first day we show up to Clearwater for our first workout. And I'm sitting there with BMAC, Ted Lilly, Shane Victorino, Jimmy Rollins, and we're jaw jacking in the locker and I see Jeter we get done with a workout and he grabs his New York Yankee toiletry bag and he heads for the shower Kev and I'm like this guy's been with a bevy of A-listers I got I gotta see what it's all about I gotta get in the shower with Derek Jeter and hang out and have have a conversation so that's, that's my story I, I said guys that's cool I'm going to hang out with Jeter in the shower did it disappoint her? <laughs> he gave me nothing. He gave me like a creepy guy from the National League trying to hang out. But no, that, that honestly. Top that, Kev. Top uh, well, that uh, story. Yeah, you can't top that, Lauren. I'm going to be honest with you. But, but what happened was is the first thing, you know, playing against the Yankees a million times a year when you're a Boston Red Sox and all the love that we have for each other, we respect each other, but you really can't stand each other when you're on those lines. And then we had a pitching change at first base, and we're sitting there, and Jeter's a big man. Jeter's very tall. Like, you don't realize, like, how big he is. The closer you keep getting, it's like, okay, we're here, when I'm far away, and then all of a sudden it's like he's six foot four, and then Uncle Kevin, I'm going to say six foot with cleats on because I was 71 and a half inches. And I'm looking up, and he's on the back, so he looks about six six, And he takes off this helmet, and we're waiting on the pitching change. And I said, you know what, Derek? You're hot. You've got a million rings. You're dating all the hot girls. I said, but the one thing I have better than you, I got better hair, Derek. I got better hair because at the end of the day, that hairline's not very good. You and Mariano got, you know, cheated on that situation. And all he did, he sat there, he's like, you're crazy, Millar. But, I mean, he is. He's rich, tall, handsome, does it all, but his hair stinks. So, at the end of the day, I have better hair than Derek Jeter.
There you go. Boring. Your new thing. 64 hours of live Jeter coverage on MLB Network this uh, weekend. I was thinking of Jeter when I read the MLB Network tweet and our Twitter question of the day. What's the most memorable on-field moment in the last 25 years? Anything is in play, gentlemen, not just Derek Jeter. Uh, Goodfellow, a lot of our viewers chiming in. Goodfellow tweeted 2004 ALCS, much via Big Poppy, a Kevin Millar fan, a Red Sox fan, or maybe it's Capalbo, our producer. Mark, that Diamondbacks fan, of course, goes back to 2001. Everyone's picking games uh, and series in which the, they beat the Yankees. Interesting. This one's all Jim Tomey. I love this. Watching my childhood hero, Jim Tomey, hit his 599th and 600th home runs in Detroit. What a wonderful human being he is. We all know that. And Christopher thinking in even years, D-Row, 2010, 2012, 2014. He loves all of them equally. What's your recent memory? 25 years. Think back in the game. What sticks out? Me first? Yeah, you first, Zero. There's Honestly, there's so many. Like, personally, the, the game after 9-11 where we played, we went into to play the Mets was, was really special for a lot of different reasons. But <laughs> if, we're, if we're pumping up the Jeter weekend, I think for me, I wasn't Derek Jeter. I wasn't a superstar. So I always wanted the everyman player to have a moment. And in 2011, David Freeze had multiple moments. And just to sit and watch that and what that meant to the St. Louis Cardinals organization, I remember going in the following year and their marketing department did a great job because on their Jumbotron, they had like all the iPhone reactions of the fans watching David Freeze's at bat when he hit the walk off the triple everything that went into that World Series game for him and it was like it got me so, it got you so pumped up to play I just playing with him knowing him him having that moment was pretty awesome to watch I love what you said after that you said whatever he does after that in his oh. career that's his defining moment it doesn't matter he made history. I'm going to Cleveland, game seven. Chris Bryant, slow roller. Anthony Rizzo puts in his pocket. Ben Zobris skipping in from the outfield. Curse over. Awesome. We can get better than that. Kev, what do you think? No, I'm going to tell you, obviously, you know, you look back in, in, in the 2004 season, you, you know, you can't make that up. And it didn't make sense to us at the time when we went down three games and none to the Yankees. And then we got clobbered in game three. I think Gary Sheffield, Matsui had blisters on their hands because they each got four hits, a couple home runs, drove in six. But that's not a fun feeling. And I think we take that for granted. You're down 0 to 3 in a seven game series, okay? And you just got clobbered. You got clobbered. So at the end of the day, when you have a chance to win four straight from the Mighty Yankees, it just doesn't get better than that. Big Poppy, the, the next two days, obviously, homers off Paul Quantrill in game four and then has an unbelievable at-bat of Rich Louisa. It was like a 12 to 14 at-bat and just a broken bat up, the, you know, in center field to, to kind of get us to game six. Uh, you know, the, the, that that was the, the, the memories all in one was that 2004 season because it really didn't make sense. Hey, Kevin. Kevin. Go ahead. Go on, real quick. Hey, Kevin. I remember in 2010 when the Texas Rangers beat the Yankees in the ALCS to come play the San Francisco Giants. And I met with Mike Young behind home plate. And I just remember, for lack of a better term, I felt like they had felt, they felt like they won their World Series beating the Yankees. Mm -hmm. And that they didn't realize that Tim Lincecum, Matt Kane, Bumgarner were going to, were coming for them. Big. Right. We ended up beating them. When you guys beat the Yankees, did you guys have a meeting and kind of like, wait, you know, pump the brakes. We still got to go out and win the World Series here. It's such a great question, D-Row, because honest to God, you know all the energy that goes into that rivalry. Yeah. And in 2003, we lost to game seven. Aaron Boone's home run off Tim Wakefield. He hadn't got the ball to the infield. One pitch, I'm throwing the ball back in from first base on warm-ups and looking at Trot Nixon going, nobody out. One pitch, knuckleball, homer, we're walking off 65,000. Long-faced Yankee fans are now happy. I'm like, ah, golly. So we lose game seven in 03. 2004, we come all the way back and beat them in game seven. So your question, yes, you felt like, wait a minute, we still have the World Series against the Cardinals, who, by the way, were the best team in baseball offensively. That was with the Jim Edmonds and, you know, Scott Rowland, and they had Larry Walker and Edgar Renteria. They were having an unbelievable year and built like an American League team. So, yeah, it was a little scary until, and no, no disrespect, but like it was, you know, we had Pedro Martinez, 
Kurt Schilling, Derek Lowe. We're going to throw in Wakefield there. And they were going with the Woody Williams, Jeff Supon, Jason Marquis. I think Chris Carpenter or Matt Carpenter. I, you know, yeah. I can't remember exactly who was their fourth. But at the end of the day, it was a tough matchup for Manny Ramirez and those boys getting those one old curveballs. Next thing you know, Sox Nation went four straight. <laughs> Kev, Hero and I were talking about you last week. And he goes, Lauren, you know him as this fun-loving, funny guy. Guy could what? Straight mash. Talking about Kevin. No, you know what? I was a thinking man's hitter. That was it. I, I, I just, Lauren, everybody always asks, hey, did you guess? Did you just react? I'm like, nah, I guessed every pitch. You know, I had to. And I think that's the cat and mouse game that's fun about baseball, Lauren, is you get in that box. And if you really sit there, the, 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 you know, the starting pitchers, they all have tendencies, right? We love the fastball. d Row loves the ball out and over the plate because he wants to drive the ball to center and right center. I was a pool power guy. So you're just trying to play that cat and mouse game to get into the hitter's counts that you – you know, your advantage of as a, at the plate. And so that was the kind of hero I was. I was just a thinking man's hitter. I love playing baseball. And, uh, you know, d is very similar. Once you got our opportunity, we didn't have a whole lot of time to not get in there and do well because our, our little noose was this long. You know, first rounders and big players, they could fail a lot. Me and d could. I love it. What kind of hitter was I, d -Row? All postage, no address. <laughs> Drain pool, foul every time. Yeah, Guys, actually, thanks so much. Actually, for you, don't, you don't give yourself enough credit. You got, like, pop. You're born yeah. with it. It's just not fair. We can, we can, we can <laughs> fix that. We can fix that. Any weekend plans, gentlemen? Kev, you first, hanging on the couch? Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll be here on the couch. I'll be looking at the blue skies. The kids will be going in and out, asking if they can go down here and go there. And I'm like, nope, you sit here with Daddy. You're going to suffer with Daddy because I told you, we had to shave their heads. They didn't listen to Daddy on the jet ski. So next thing you know, they got a two-guard, and they're not looking great. I'm going to be honest with you. So it's going to take them a few weeks to come back from this one. That's the best punishment ever. Dero? I can't top that. I, Lauren, much of the same for me. I'm going okay. go to go play golf. I'm going to social distance. I'm going to go in my pool. I'm at social distance. Hang That's with it. your family. With Heidi? Yeah. All wonderful things. I'm not That's social great. distancing with, with Heidi, Kevin. <laughs> All right. It's time to go on Friday. Okay? <laughs> See you Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe.